Yes, yeah, so Hillary Mantle uh, is is ashamed to be British now and wants to become Irish to to escape Brexit. Britain, she thinks uh, she thinks Britain, uh, you know, post Brexit has has become this this hellhole of uh, of racism and we're we're horrible to to refugees. Um, but um, yeah, so she she wants to escape to to Ireland, um, which is you know your classic sort of privileged rich liberal response it's like oh, i've got the resources i can just go live wherever i want yeah, you know? i'll move to canada yeah yes yeah, so i'm gonna i'm gonna side. like you know denounce britain and, and move to yeah canada and new zealand uh funnily enough uh, one of the one of the things she criticized britain uh, about was uh, reducing its overseas aid from 07 uh, percent of gdp to 0.5 percent of gdp which is a huge <gasps> i mean like Britain gives a huge amount of money. There's very few countries. I think Germany is the only one that, that gives more. Uh, Canada gives 0.3%. Yeah, but just also like global pandemic, we just spent billions. Oh my God, how could you do this? Yeah, like, yeah. And also, also aid. Cash. Aid, I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not as good as, as allowing um, markets in, in uh, the third world to, to sort of deal with the issues themselves. Quite often when uh, aid, aid goes in, um, so they'll, uh, you know, there'll be disaster relief, and they'll they'll bring food in, and then the local markets will collapse because uh, they can't compete with people There's being no given be free anymore. free food. Um, so then, when the aid agencies leave, uh, the market's been devastated and uh, and can't can't recover. So it it creates dependency uh, on on the sort of welfare state, which I mean, it's something that we're we're seeing in the West as well. It's almost like the the government has an agenda to cr- make everybody dependent. Um, but yeah, so so she's moving to Ireland. But one thing that's interesting is uh, so the NHS tax, this tax hike was was announced what yesterday or two days ago. Um, Hillary Mantle uh, announces this now, and uh, writers and artists don't pay tax in Ireland. So I wonder if uh, that, I wonder if that had anything. To, I mean, she could have moved to France, you know what I mean? Except that the tax rates in France are quite high. Uh, so she's moved to Ireland, where where artists and writers don't pay don't pay any income tax. Is J.K. Rowling based there? No, I think she's. I think she still no. lives in Scotland. But she's got. But J.K. Rowling is, uh, is probably generates more money than the entire Scottish oil industry. Probably does actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it dipped. It dipped well below a billion, didn't it? Um, was it last year? Um, Scotland's number one export is now J.K. Rowling books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and funnily enough, um, uh, Hillary Mantle got some some grief from the left uh, previously for defending J.K. Rowling. And uh, she also complained that she'd been misgendered by a university who referred to her as they instead of she. But, I mean, I think the, the university was probably, <laughs> you know, playing safe and trying to be woke. <laughs> what, what's wrong with assuming they instead of she? Transpho? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, she's, uh, she's previously, um, this isn't the first time she's uh, had any controversy. Uh, she's, she's won the, the Booker Prize twice. Which I think she's the first woman to, to win it twice. Um, I haven't read the books Wolf Hall, and there's another one. They're all about um, uh, Cromwell. Um, I'm not sure which Cromwell. <laughs> but, uh, they're med- medieval. Adds another aspect of the moving to Ireland there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sort of doing his dream there of uh, you know moving the English to Ireland, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so she's you know a really accomplished uh, writer. Um, but man, I, I swear to God, like the tax. The fact that she's not going to pay any income tax, I mean, she won't be unaware of that. So I think that's that's playing a big part of her decision to move to Ireland. But, you know, she's seen an opportunity to make this sanctimonious point about Brexit Britain, uh, where, where actually all the people who are staying are going to be paying more tax. So she's making some, you know, big virtue signalling point and then swanning off to Ireland where she, she won't have to pay any tax. Hmm. She going to... Uh, uh, and move back at any point, or just staying there forever? Or I don't know. I mean, no idea. She's. Uh, I mean, quite quite a few people do do move back um, after after moving away. Because you always hear like that, you know, I'm going to move to Canada, and then they never do. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Before every election, people on both sides say, "If they win, I'm moving. I'm go- I'm moving away." Yeah, it's never moving to Mexico, and... is it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> always moving. To yeah, Canada. or New Zealand. Um, and then they and then they comment on uh, local politics. Like Sean Connery was uh, was commenting on um, Scottish independence and saying how you know we should have Scottish independence. But he was saying that from Marbella, or Los Angeles, or wherever he lived. I think it was Marbella. So you had to say on that. 
What's that? Is that what you had to say on that? Or? On Hillary Mantle? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. I, mean, there's, there's been a, there's <laughs> I didn't know if you were giving me a signal to end or not. Honestly. Yeah, no, I mean, um, there's been a few controversies. So we've got those up. So she's uh, she's been critical of the Catholic Church. Uh, she's been critical of uh, Kate Middleton as well, who I should probably refer to. Oh, that's another thing. So uh, Hillary Mantle, she could, she's been made a dame. Um, I don't know what that means. I think that means she can move diagonally on a chessboard. I'm not entirely sure what, what all these titles mean. Um, so again, she, could, she could hand that back. Can't people hand back the... Although I, I, I don't like it when they, they accept it. They accept the title and then hand it back. Like Michael Sheen, you know, the, the Welsh actor. So he accepted an MBE or an OBE or something like that. And then he handed it back. So he got all the fun of accepting this uh, this honour. And he got to go to Buckingham Palace and meet the royals. And I bet there's a free bar. And uh, and so he had he had that, you know, fun day out. And then he has all the fun of making a big statement of, oh, I'm giving this back because Britain's terrible. And it's like, don't accept it in the first place. Or if you do accept it, keep it. Hmm. So um, It wasn't so terrible when you were getting awards, was it? Yeah, yeah. Everybody loves getting awards. So, yeah, Hilary Mantle, she accepted her damehood. She's been made a dame, whatever a dame is. <laughs> I thought it was a man in drag in a pantomime. But also, again, very underprivileged. Only a dame. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, so, so underprivileged. Really suffering from Brexit. Really suffering. You know, it's really started to, to bite. Uh, I believe, you know, the price of uh, avocados has gone up at Waitrose. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's going to be tougher. Actually, you know, working people seem to be doing quite well uh, under Brexit. Not that I'm, I'm not, a, you know, a Brexiteer or anything, but I think there's, you know, there's arguments on both sides. And certainly HGV drivers are uh, are doing much better. Um, their their salaries have gone up. Yeah, I saw some Facebook posts that some guys are getting as high as £3,000 a week now. Jeez. I don't know if that's uh, confirmed, but some guy was being like, yeah, no, if I do agency work. That's I equivalent just... to, like, diversity and inclusion work. Yeah, they're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and she's uh, she said the coalition government is more brutal to the poor and immigrants than Thomas Cromwell was. Uh, I'm not sure if that's entirely true. I mean, like <laughs> you said, she's moving to Ireland, right? Like, <laughs> well, okay. I was I was reading about uh, medieval um, medieval public torture recently, just for for fun. Um, no, because um, because I I just think the the parallels with uh, with how people hound each other on social media are, are quite interesting and like some of the some of the um cases were were so, so interesting there was a guy who was uh, he was he was sentenced to be publicly hanged or publicly impaled or something and they commuted his sentence to uh, being sent to north america and it's like that's not a punishment i'd love like right now i'd love to get i'd pay to go to North America. Lots of people do. You know what I mean? It'd be a dream, but back in those days, it was like, oh, well, we were going to impale you on a spike, but oh, even more, we're going to send you to North America no. on a boat. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> now his ancestors or his descendants probably live in a massive ranch. Yeah. Everyone here is living in a tiny house. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Hilary Mantle uh, described uh, Kate Middleton Who's what's Kate Middleton's title? Is she a princess or a? I have no is idea. Is she a princess? I think she's a princess. She's got to be a princess. Yeah, she's married to what's his face, Prince, Prince William. So, um, uh, Hilary Mantle uh, described uh, Kate Middleton as a shop window mannequin. Oh, obviously, this this is taken slightly out of context. She was making a, a point about the media and how it treats it. But I mean, the, the royal family are basically a you know a, a sort of media uh, showpiece. They're, they're the Kardashians with heritage so I, I don't think it's unfair of her to to say that really if you enjoyed that segment from the podcast the lotus eaters you can go to prelotuseaters.com and get access to all our premium content things like our book club where we examine classics like aldous huxley's brave new world and examine the themes that underpin it and now we're getting worryingly close to that or modern books like mark sidwell's the long march which is how exactly we ended up in the current cultural situation we're in and what conservatives can do about it or you can check out the other series we have such as our contemplation series where uh, hugo and josh decided to in the light latest one have a look at uh, an examination on the ways that other elections have been rigged. 
for no reason at all. Or you can check out our Epoch series, which is one of my personal favorites, because this is where I get to talk about history. And I love I love talking about just random things from history. And one of the great things we can do with this series is talk about those things that aren't so often discussed. So, I mean, you can talk about Xerxes' army, the vast army that invaded uh, Greece during the Greek Greco-Persian Wars. Or we can go through things like Herodotus's view on the Scythians. Uh, who are they? You probably don't know, but they used to be quite an important people a long time ago, and they're very, very interesting. We've got some really good reports about them. Or we've got premium podcasts, which is things we generally don't want to put outside of the paywall because we might get in trouble for them, such as the list of things that Alex Jones was right about. Uh, or we do just very interesting discussions because there are things that we do lots of work on. Uh, another one is that I'm particularly proud of is where Christopher Hitchens, the famous new atheist, would have fallen during the modern culture wars because he probably wouldn't have been very woke. But uh, we also have lots of interviews and articles and other things on the website that you can sign up to enjoy, and uh, we th we're really proud of them. So if any of that sounds good to you, go over to lotuses.com and sign up for as little as £5 a month to support us, keep the show going, and also to get access to all the content. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>